Hey. You just gonna keep beeping, huh? Until I put my seatbelt on. Cause that's what my car does, apparently. My car, the only car I know, it'll be in park and it'll be dinging cause my seatbelt not on. But I'm gonna do my birth vlog video. So, well, I'm gonna try to. I'm sitting here waiting on the mirror's bus to pull up. So I figured perfect time to try to record a video. So, as y'all know, I was like trying to self-induce and get induced for like the longest and my doctors was not having it. And they finally agreed to let me get induced on the 4th of January. And on the 4th, I was supposed to be, well, I did end up getting induced on the 4th. So I was having contractions like all freaking morning and all night, the night of the third. And then on the fourth, I was kind of like, I didn't feel good. My stomach was kind of hurt and I was cramping a little bit. My back was real sore and I didn't really have no appetite. So on that next morning, the day I was getting induced, I, um, you know, I started packing up all my stuff. I got everything basically ready for me to be induced and I was set to go in at 8 p.m. on the 4th. Me and my mom dropped the kids off at like 6.30 at my aunt's house, um, well at the guy mom's house and then we basically went straight to the hospital. Well, I'm lying. We went to like the dollar store and I got a whole bunch of snacks that my ass ain't even eat. But yeah, so. We did that and then we got to the hospital at like 8 15 we was a little late so i got upstairs we was literally waiting it felt like we were sitting there waiting on them to call us back for like an hour at least it was at least like 45 minutes that we were sitting in the waiting room so they finally called me and my mom and then got me into my room got my iv put in and all this other stuff so once they got my IV in, it took a couple times because my veins collapsed a lot since I've had so many IVs and like so many hospital visits over the last couple years. My veins is really weak now. So they collapse really easy and they kept basically collapsing on the nurses. So they had to have a specialist come in and like put the IV in. And once they got that in, they hooked me up to the little toku machine and the contraction machine thing to make sure, you know, to see if I was having contractions to monitor them because I was having contractions when I came in and I was at a one. So this whole time I had thought I was at a two, but I guess I was only at a one. So the nurse came in, well, the OB came in and the midwife and you know, she checked me. She was like, you're at a one. Um, they were originally trying to do the Foley ball on me. Now, if you have kids, you know what the Foley balloon is. It's the balloon that's a catheter. They stick it up there and they basically inflate it. To dilate your cervix that was the original plan was for me to not get the cytotec because when i got the cytotec with amaya it made my contractions really bad so i was like i don't want to do cytotec this time i want to just do it naturally so we was you know gonna go with the foley balloon well she checked me she was like you're only at a one and it'll be really painful to try to do that right now so how do you feel about trying a different version of cytotec and i didn't want to but i was like okay you know, let's just do it. So I think we started my actual induction at like 10 o'clock. It was like 9 45, 10 o'clock when they started. And um, they gave me the first dose. It's a little bitty white pill that's like super tiny. It's literally so, so tiny and it dissolves. You put it in the side of your cheek and it basically dissolves. And it's supposed to thin your cervix and help jumpstart contractions basically. So I did the first dose at like 10 o'clock and the contractions was real they was minor you know they wasn't hurting i was able to talk through them me and my mom was watching you know watching movies i was able to get up and walk around oh, that's what i was going to ask you how does that work with the laughing mask if i'm in the tub to upsell controlled substances um you cannot use it without. okay so i'll have to be able to like just use it out there obviously i'm not going to need it when i'm pushing yeah but but yeah you you cannot use it because it's connected like right here in it yeah 
Titanic can kind of make you like kind of shaky. I don't want to say boopy, but like it can just kind of make you feel funny, and we just don't want you like in the tub right. with it. And, and, and it is hooked up like all right here. Okay. So I know with my daughter, they. And then we did my second dose at. I want to say one because no 10 11 12 one. it was like two o'clock because it was every four hours yeah so i did the second dose at two it was either like one or two i don't remember but we did the second dose i put that one in my cheek too the contractions got a little bit more intense but still not to the point where i was like okay this is like not it i was noticing i'm on the monitor like okay actually let me back up so my contractions was like in the 120s like when i looked at the monitor they were saying like 120 i'm gonna actually insert some of the clips into this video So y'all can see what I was talking about. Cause they was like, they started in the 80s and they jumped up to like one something. And I was literally chilling. Like I didn't feel them. Like it was little bitty cramps here and there. It wasn't bad at all. So I took the second pill. I didn't really notice no difference. She came in and checked me again. I was still at a one. And I was like, okay. So she said, well, you're not dilating. So how about with this third one, instead of you taking it orally, we insert it vaginally and just put it on the cervix. I said, okay. It was like six o'clock now. So she basically came in, she um did like an exam type of thing and checked me out with the little one. And when she like basically checked me, she just had the pill on the tip of her finger. She just slipped it onto my cervix. And that was at like, five or six i don't remember the time y'all bear with me because i was like so out of it at this point because the contractions picked up after she did that third one when she put that one on my cervix i remember i was doing really good like i really handle y'all see in the videos i handled this labor so good like i took that junk like a g bro Like, I remember I was contracting. My mom was asleep. We was both trying to get some rest before because, you know, at this point, it was going on 12 hours since I had started my induction. So, you know, I had the ball. I was bouncing on the ball. I was kind of rocking back and forth. I was handling the contractions really good. My mom would wake up every once in a while like, hey, you okay? You good? I'm like, yep, I'm fine. I was taking them like a G. I was talking to um my best friend, Camry. You know, she was talking to me, and then all of a sudden, shit got real. And I was like, yeah, no. My mom, the last, I remember the last time my mama asked me like, are you okay? I said, no, no. Like it was, it was bad. Like my pain was, it went from like a three to like a fucking hundred, bro. What's she doing? Uh, she's in quite a bit of pain right now. I finally checked huh, her. I'm gonna, gonna hang up and all over Facebook. It's not, uh, FaceTime isn't connected right now. Oh, okay. <laughs> Oh, I think I just, I just messed her up. She was trying to answer it and it scooped it away. She said FaceTime wasn't connecting, right? Oh. 
And by now it was like 7.30, maybe. It was like 7.20, 7.30. My OB finally got there, my midwife, to deliver the baby. She finally got there. And I was by this point, I was in so much pain that I couldn't even talk. Like, I couldn't talk. She was basically, like, asking me, you know, are the contractions that close? By now, my contractions was every, like, 30 seconds. They seem to be coming pretty much back to back. Yeah, yeah. That's something like maybe the tongue is facing out a little bit. Like, I wasn't getting no breaks in between them. Like, they was coming, like, back to back. And I remember I was bouncing in the ball, and my um, midwife wanted to check me. And she was like, you know, I want to check you because I feel like at this point we can probably go ahead and do the Foley balloon. I think you might be dilated enough now. I said, okay. I tried to get up on the bed. As soon as I stood up, I got another contraction. I remember I was like on my hands and knees just rocking in the bed. And she was like, let me check you really quick. So I remember I laid down on my back. She was like, let's try to check you in between these contractions because they're coming quick. And I remember I laid down, bruh. When I tell you, this lady literally put her fingers in and pulled them out and looked at my mama and said, she's at a nine. And my mom went, what? And I was like, a nine? And she literally was like, you're at a nine, mama. We don't need to do a Foley balloon. You're almost there. So within, I literally went from a one to a nine in an hour and a half. Because I told y'all the last pill that she inserted was at 6 o'clock. And she checked me at like 7.30. So in an hour and a half, I went from a 1 to a 9. And I remember looking at my mom and going, I'm getting in the tub. And she was like, I don't think you're going to make it to the tub, baby. You know you dilate quick. I said, I'm getting in the damn tub. And I remember they started running the water. And everything kind of, it kind of blacked out after that. Because I was in so much pain by this point. But they started running the water, and I remember her coming in and going, the water is like six inches. It's six inches in the tub. You just need a little bit more, and you can get in. They finally got the tub filled. I got in the tub, and everything, like, took off from there. Like, it was it was intense after that. Like, it was, it was crazy. I remember I started getting contractions back to back, and I remember my water still hadn't broke at this point. And I remember, you'll see in the video... Well, I'm going to post that video before I post this one. But I literally remember screaming. Like, y'all will see in the video. I was screaming at the top of my lungs because I was pushing. And I remember my mama looking at me and going, are you pushing? And I was like, mm-hmm. And I remember all the doctors, like, running in the room. Because, once again, there was nobody in the room when I started pushing. And they was like, we not doing this again. Because <laughs> that's what happened with Maya. That's why I delivered her myself. So I remember my midwife, like one of my midwives was like, are you pushing? I was like, yes. And she ran out to get my midwife. She came in and I remember I screamed. I thought it was his head coming out. When I reached down to grab his head to like give myself motivation, it was actually my water bag. My water bag didn't, it didn't break before it came out. Like my water bag, if it makes sense, it came out like a, like a water balloon. Like my whole water bag slipped out and I grabbed it. And when I squeezed it, it popped. So when I seen, well, when I felt that, I was like, oh crap. And I still had that urge to push. So I remember I just kept pushing, kept it. I gotta, I gotta throw up. Like it was, it was so intense. Y'all have seen a video because my mom actually got the entire tub process. Like it's a 25 minute video, I think. She got the entire thing on video. My entire birth is on video. So, and she put the camera in like the perfect angle to where y'all can't see none of my private area, but you can still see everything going on which is awesome shout out to my mama um so yeah i said i had to push my midwife came in and y'all will see like the rest from there you know she was telling me what to do uh coaching me through it and it was crazy like it was crazy i just i can't believe i dilated that quick like i can believe it because it's me <laughs> i always dilate quick like it's just it never fails i went from a seven to a ten with a mirror in 10 minutes and i went from a four to a ten with a maya in two minutes and this time i went from a one to a nine in an hour so hey <laughs> not surprised um i will say out of all my labors 
this was probably my most memorable one just because it was a lot of emotions with it like with Amaya it was memorable because I had a really good support system and I basically delivered her myself like there was nobody in the room with me besides Deontay his mom and his sister and his mom's husband when Maya came out I think my mama swears she was in the room but I keep telling her she was in the hallway shouting for the nurse <laughs> so yeah this time it was like completely different it was it was just like y'all have seen the video it was it was emotional I had everybody in the room crying when he came out like all of my nurses was crying I was crying my mama was crying the midwives was crying like everybody was just crying Camry was on FaceTime crying because that's the first thing I said when they told me I was a nine I said ma you gotta call Camry and she called Camry and I was like because if she missed this baby be born she is gonna be so sad <laughs> so she got to see her godson be born she was on video the whole time shout out to my bestie she kept my head in order because I was girl I know you about to be watching this later girl I thought I was about to die okay them contractions <laughs> they was taking a bitch out <laughs> but yeah so overall it was a really really good experience from the time I was literally in labor 12 hours on the dot from the time I got to the hospital until he was born was exactly 12 hours I got to the hospital at 8 15 and he was born at 8 15 <laughs> the more the next morning so with that being said make sure y'all watch my birth my birth vlog and comment like and subscribe because i'm gonna be me and the kids about to be dropping videos back to back i'm gonna do a video every day for the month of february and i'm gonna try to do a giveaway so make sure y'all be watching and bye